Hey everybody, welcome. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon <laughs> Valley. We are so excited as always to share stories of people who are making a difference in the lives of others. We are part of Rotary International. Rotary International, 1.2 million Rotarians around the world and 36,000 clubs who believe in service above self in improving their communities near and far and making a difference for those who might need it. Now, our particular club based in Northern California has about 60 members uh, around the world. We are, we are strewn across because we are both an online and an asynchronous club. If you're curious about that, contact us. We're happy to tell you more. Uh, one of the things that, that we're really into is looking for programs that are, that are innovative, entrepreneurial, educational in some way. And today you're gonna hear about a really beautiful program called AmpSurf. Our speaker is Dana Cummings. And Dana is, is a really interesting guy who has done lots in lots of different parts of the world. He is a Marine. He is someone who makes sure that, that opportunities come to those who have been uh, affected by challenges in different ways. You read about some of these things on the intro on the way in. And so what I'll do now is hand it over to Dana. Dana, we are happy to have you with us. Russian, so happy to be here as well. And thank you for that great introduction and introduction of AmpSurf. And hello to everybody who's out there around the world tuning into this today. Uh, I just want to give you guys a quick little rundown on AmpSurf. So our mission is to promote, inspire, educate, and rehabilitate everyone with disabilities out there around the world through adaptive surf therapy and other activities. And we think that adaptive surfing is one of those sports where most people out there don't think they can do. So when we combine that with folks living with different conditions and disabilities and show them that they can do it, it really helps them to focus on their abilities and gets them motivated to, to get back to living a, a, an active life style. Um, our vision, again, is for all people with disabilities to experience a freedom of adaptive sports without limitation. So we do things like we partner with different programs to create devices for people. We do clinics to, for surfing and we just really get people out there. Um, who we are, we're a 501c3 organization. We're all volunteer um, and we are made up of people that are living with lifelong disabilities like myself. I'm missing my uh, lower left leg. A lot of retired fire, police and military work with us. And of course we're surfers. So we're a lot of surfers and community members at the different beaches and places that we serve. And then all of our instructors, we train them all. Uh, we have a certification program that we've partnered with the ISA, which is the International Surfing Organization. And we train everyone on how to be out there. So we make sure we keep everybody safe from that kid who is living with autism to that veteran who served uh, you know, in some kind of conflict somewhere in the world. We wanna make sure we keep them safe so that they have a great time out there. Um, then who do we teach and support? We teach a lot of veterans and special needs children and adults and adaptive athletes. So we support everyone from that child who's living with a congenital uh, condition to the, uh, to the vet that's coming back from conflicts around the world to adaptive athletes that are competing at the pinnacle of the sport. So from our clinics to those we serve there to being the title partner and sponsor for the World Parasurfing Championships. We want we cover all that. Uh, we do mentorship uh, programs as well and do coaching and, and team sponsorships. So we're a, a, a team uh, member. I'm a team member actually of Team USA and I also sponsor a lot of the training uh, programs for them as well to make sure we have beach wheelchairs at the events, shade, waters, all that good stuff that everybody needs when you're at the beach. Um, and then what we do. So yes, we teach adaptive surfing through our clinics. We support these, these um, individuals, these veterans, adults and children and athletes and everything else. But there's a lot more to what we do as well. Like obviously, um, you know, we're here today chatting about Amp Surf and, and, and everything. Uh, and so we, we do a lot of outreach in the community and we do, we do the sponsorships for the, for the vets and the first responders. We network with lots of other nonprofits out there like uh, Stop, Drop and Push, uh, Wounded Warrior Project, to uh, groups here like locally, we work with the Special Olympics and, and all, those, all those ones in between and to make it all happen. And then we provide services for other organizations, large and small. For instance, we provide surf clinics for the Department of Veterans Affairs. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing a clinic in Rhode Island called their New England Summer Sports Clinic. And we'll have about 30 vets out there for that event. And so we do those. We do camps with groups like the San Diego Parks and Rec. We have a big 
group we do down there called uh, Camp Wet and Wild, where we'll have 67 plus kids for a week that are living with autism and Down syndrome and other and other special needs. Um, at the end of the day, it all boils down to adaptive surf therapy. What is adaptive surf therapy? Well, it's basically just taking the sport of surfing to meet the, no, the needs of those that are living with the various conditions and, and disabilities that they live with every day. So this could be physical conditions, behavioral, uh, mental health, uh, intellectual, cognitive, it doesn't matter what the disability is. We basically take surfing and adapt it to what that individual needs so that they can meet their goal of one, just having a fun time out there at the beach, but also learning something that they can take away a lifelong skill. There's a lot of groups out there that do surfing, but a lot of, a lot of them are just like an intro or a, Hey, great time. They make it a few minutes. We actually want to try to teach these individuals how to surf so that you know, as they develop and, and their skill grows, they could actually at some point hopefully go and surf on their own or surf with a couple of friends, just like I go out with my buddies and, and, and surf and stuff. So it, it's a great, and it's just a great way to uh, connect with people and to, uh, to help foster that community spirit with them and, and, and help them to grow in different ways. So some of the things we've done in the past and a little history on us. Um, so we were founded in, in 2003, I lost my leg in 2002 and learned to surf about four months after. So I didn't surf before I lost my leg. And so a buddy of mine taught me, I thought, man, if I can learn this chubby little farm boy from Maine, we can teach anybody. And it's worked. So, uh, so we did it a few years here locally in Pismo Beach. And then we decided in 2008, we we're gonna grow and, and expand. So we went mobile that year and we partnered with the VA to do events with them. And we went from teaching maybe you know 10 to 20 people a year to teaching a couple hundred a year. Um, in 2010, we expanded to the East Coast, doing uh, clinics in New York and New England, and we started our weekly vet surf program here, where we take vets out every week. And then uh, we um, expanded in 2011 up and down the coast of New York, of of, of the East Coast of the United States. So any from Maine all the way to Florida, um, helping people out and getting them in the water. Then we established some new chapters through the years out in New York and New England. And in 2018, as we continue to grow, we joined the International Surf Therapy Organization, which is a great organization. It's about 60 of us around the world providing adaptive surf therapy to every demographic you could think of out there, from foster kids to veterans to um, people that live, you know, with quadriplegia um, to just everything under the sun. It's really, really neat, and and to see all the changes, a uh, great you know, life changes and experiences it's, it's creating for people. A um, couple of years ago, right before uh, COVID kind of got us all, we, we expanded up in the Pacific Northwest for our fourth chapter. And so we have operations up there serving that area. Then last year was kind of our, our I don't know, the crowning moment for us as, we, as we've grown and coming full circle was doing the World Parasurfing Championships out of La Jolla. So just taking everything we've done with our clinics and supporting athletes uh, at, at lower level events to doing the premier event for like athletes that are going to go eventually and compete in the Paralympics and stuff like that. As you, most of you know, I'm sure that surfing's in the Olympics this year for the able body side of it. So the parallel side of that is the Paralympics. And so we're helping create the parasurfing um, uh, uh, venues for that. And Excited to announce also that this year we're going to be doing it here in Pismo Beach. Uh, we'll be hosting the event and partnering with the city here as the title partner for the event and holding it here. So we'll have about 30 to 40 countries bringing anywhere from 150 to 300 athletes, coaches, and, and, and conditioning folks to, uh, to hold that event. And then again this year... Um, We've, we've launched other programs as well. We've launched a surf shuttle. So we're bringing vets in from the Valley here in California, bringing folks out to, uh, to experience a surf that can't afford the, the, the cost of driving, you know, two plus hours each way and, and stuff like that. So we partnered with a, a group called stop, drop and push to, uh, uh, create a surf shuttle for everybody coming out from the valley and stuff. And that runs every week. Um, we did our first uh, women's only uh, veteran surf project event this year to focus on, on women uh, that have suffered different um, um, 
things in the military, everything from military sexual trauma to uh, other other um, disabilities and conditions that they may have they may have had happen. And as I said previously, we're going to be hosting the the world championships here in, in Pismo. And then we're training adaptive surf instructors now with our partnership with the ISA all over the world. Uh, and so we've already so far, we've trained new instructors in 30 different countries, um, countries as far away as Russia, and Iran, we had three instructors in Iran actually take the course, and uh, and we're teaching people in Europe, South America, South Africa, and, and and worldwide. It's just really amazing to see that program of ours grow so well, and expand, and we've done that with our partnership with the ISA. Um, how it all gets done, a lot of community involvement, lots of uh, working with different partners, uh, doing presentations with groups like Rotary. Uh, here's a, is a great representation of a lot of the groups we work with. So it's, it's, it's groups big and small. Our biggest partner is the VA. Um, and then, uh, you know, it also helps. We, we try to get as much media coverage as we can because that, you know, gets the word out to more people and gets us, you know, more participants, volunteers, and sponsors. And that's that's the big thing with us is that we don't exist without our three key groups. And that's our, our participants, our volunteers, and our, our sponsors slash partners out there. And then we, of course, like every other nonprofit on the planet, you know, we get to we get to pay the bills. So we do a lot of fundraising, grant writing, everything from golf tournaments, poker runs to bowling uh, <laughs> stuff. So it's it's a lot of fun. It, it, it gets a lot, you know, there's a lot there's a lot that goes on with it, but it all comes together really well, and ends up providing just a phenomenal program for um, the participants that come out and surf with us. Um, if you get a chance, um, Rushton's going to send out, I think, a, a link to this presentation. There's, there's some videos here you can check out. Um, and, and they really show everything from the, from the clinic aspect of the program to the competition aspect of the program. And I think uh, there was a, there's a, sh a short video you guys were all able to see previously. And hopefully that gave you a good uh, uh, preview of what the program does and how we do it. So when you get a chance, check these out. They're really, really informational and, and, and you'll enjoy them. And then I just want to say to all of you, thank you so much for having me on. Um, thank you for your interest in our program. And thank you for all the Rotary does, not only for programs like AmpSurf, but for everyone around the world and, and all the different things you guys help with. It's been amazing to see and be a part of and watch all that the, the Rotary does. And Rushton, thank you so much for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. It's great to have you, Dana. I am I'm excited about the, the messages that are a part of, of so much of what you're doing. And for those of you who are watching this recording as part of our meeting, oh my goodness, if you didn't go back and watch the inspirational video earlier in the meeting of, about AmpSurf, go pause and go, go watch that one real quick because, because you'll want to have seen that for sure. It'll be one to share. So uh, real quick, some introductions in addition to our speaker, Dana. Uh, we have with us our, our president, at least for the next seven days as we record, uh, Raquel, who has done an amazing job this year. Totally cool that, that you have uh, done everything you've done. And she is, I believe, the one who introduced me to Surfers Unite Rotarian Fellowship. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're amazing. We've had Brett Morey and, and, uh, and his, his story is you know, on before as well. Great stuff. So, uh, so I, my name is Rushton. I am the charter president of the E Club of Silicon Valley, and uh, and I'll start the questioning first. Dana, when we think about the, the scope of the work that, that you do here, uh, you, you know, there's there's all of the the sponsorships. That's been a real big help as well, clearly. But but in thinking about making the organization sustainable over time. What, what would you say is the biggest challenge for, for going from being a, a group of all volunteers to perhaps something that, that, is, that is much more, uh, much more structured as, as an organization? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest challenge is, is always getting the volunteer support out there and getting, and getting the partnerships and sponsorships. I mean, as I think most nonprofits have to share that. And, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I tell some people, sometimes I feel like I'm a politician and I'm constantly running for office and running in fund, fundraising, but it's just part of the, it's part of what it is. We've, we've actually um, deliberately uh, tried to keep it all volunteer just because we want to keep the focus where it should be. And, and I'm not, there's lots of organizations that have paid staff and everything else. And we have a couple paid staff, but we try to keep it as a minimum so that we're pumping everything back into the program and it doesn't become, you know, we're going to make sure we make payroll type of thing. 
And so that's, that's, and that's always a balancing act and a challenge. It's one of those things where we, you know, we try to stay that community based grassroots operation, but we're a national organization. So it, it is really a, a big balancing act for that. All right. Raquel, uh, you, you may have some, some thoughts on the program based on your long experience with uh, Surfers Unite. Yeah, I actually met Dana after a, the Para Surfing Championship and thanks to Brett Mori. So I think it's the beauty of Rotary that it kind of connects you <laughs> with different organizations. I've been hooked up to Adaptive Surfing since my first event uh, a couple of years ago with Life World Sound. So yeah, like I think at the end, it's, we need uh, more people hearing the stories of those who are part of this community that we actually take a minute to listen and to hear and to understand and try to connect and why not like uh, to create adaptive solutions and yeah, like I think uh, people with difference uh, sometimes deviates, you know, like from the social normal and spearing inconsistence reaction from the larger society and we need to rewrite no social norms and understand disability and supporting organizations like I'm sure uh, for me it's been a really interesting experience especially because I'm half of my time on the other side of the border but right now COVID doesn't allow me to, <laughs> to cross to the U.S. so my volunteer activity with I'm sure like it's been a little bit uh, different uh, I, I actually miss the surfing part, obviously, but the connection. But uh, if you guys like to all of those who are listening to the recording and, and, and sharing with us, like go and look for this organization, look for Amsurf, like it's amazing. And I'm so grateful that Dana uh, allowed me to, to be part of this uh, as an advisor and I'm learning. And I hope that at some point we can do more for the community. Uh, I think we, we need that, uh, especially right now in these times. Yeah, well, and, and that's the thing too, is that, yeah, I mean, we're not doing anything down where you're at right now, but there are a ton of other great organizations, you know, just think of it, you know, like I was saying with the ISTO, the National Surf Therapy Organization, there's 60 groups there. So wherever you're at in the world, you could probably find somebody to plug into. And, you know, of course we want everyone to come be a part of our events, but if you can't, by all means, please go and support these other groups and be a part of them and, and, you know, help those folks there because, you know, it always takes a, it takes, you know, the whole th it takes a village. It really does take a village to make it, make it happen. So um, I would just encourage everyone, if, you know, if we're not in your area, please reach out to someone that is and get involved because you'll, you'll, you always walk away with more. I, I always, you know, we have volunteers that have been with us almost 20 years and they're, they're not getting paid. They're not, so they're getting something out of it. And I think, and I always tell people the volunteers get just as much, if not more out of it as the participants, because you can't help, but feel great when you see someone ride that way for the first time, that huge smile on their face. It's just amazing. Yeah, like I think even if you like surfing or not, uh, just go to an event, volunteer in any capacity, and you're going to love it. Like for me, I've been volunteering different events and by far surfing, adaptive surfing has been the highlight. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, that, you bring up a great point too, is that so everybody out there knows you don't have to be a surfer to volunteer with us. If you can hand someone a bottle of water on the beach, you can volunteer with us. We, I mean, obviously we love it when we've got more surfers involved and people that can help in the water, but we've got so much that happens on the beach from check-in to, you know, when they come out of the water, handing somebody a towel or a bottle of water. So uh, if, if you can, if you can come down to one of these events, one of our events, somebody else's event, you can always help. You don't have to be a surfer to do it. You can, you can help out in so many ways. So speaking of events, you, you mentioned this event that's coming up in Pismo Beach. I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that. When it is, you know, what, what kinds of things you're looking for in terms of volunteers, things like that. Yeah, so, so we're really excited. So it's the World Parasurfing Championship. So these are all athletes representing their different countries and they'll be coming here. So we're expecting between 30 and 40 countries to participate. Each one of them will have a, have team, uh, have team riders. They'll have coaches, they'll have trainers. And some teams are small, some are big. So I'll, for instance, team Denmark has one, has one guy that serves for team Denmark and he'll have some of his support people. teams like team England, team, uh, Australia, team South Africa. They'll have 16 athletes 
with 10 more support staff and stuff like that. So they'll all come here to surf and become crowned world champions. And all these, all these athletes are vying for spots to be on their team's rep representation for when surfing is in the Parasurf, in the Olympics for, para, for the Paralympics. And so every sport that's in the Olympics or the Paralympics has some kind of world championships um, that happens around the world. So whether it be tennis, gymnastics, whatever. So this is surfing's version of that for the, for the Paralympics. And again, all these folks are coming in. So it takes a ton of people. So we're really actually hoping to partner with local rotaries here to help provide lunches. So for years, our local rotaries here in Grover Beach, Five Cities and Pismo have provided lunches at our, our, at our Learn to Surf clinics. So we're really hoping this year that we can get all the local rotaries together and partner with us to provide lunch each day for all these athletes and their trainers and stuff. And so that's a great way you could get involved. And heck, if you're coming from around the world and want to have a great place to come vacation, come to Pismo Beach and be a part of this event. It's beautiful here in December. The water's a little chilly, I won't lie, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it'll be a great time and you'll be able to experience something that's just an amazing thing. And, 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 and it is literally a worldwide event when it, when it all comes together. And what are the dates? Oh, I'm sorry. The dates are December 4th through the 13th for that event. Competition, I believe, will be the 6th to the 11th. All right. Yeah. And and so those who might want to want to get involved in some way. Uh, do they do they contact AmpSurf? Do they go to AmpSurf.org and contact us, or how does it work? Yeah, they can they can go to AmpSurf.org. They can just shoot us an email at surf at AmpSurf.org. Uh, that's an easy way to get a hold of us. And then we'll have, so right now we're finalizing all these contracts and everything else. But once all that's finalized, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll have signups for volunteers and stuff like that up available on the website and through our Eventbrite and stuff like that. Have there been moments where the, the Rotary Clubs that have helped you have stepped up in ways that you hadn't expected? Yeah, I mean, it's always been an amazing thing. So uh, like one of the local rotaries, I think I want to say it's the AG Rotary. They they came to us, so they raffle off a motorcycle or a car every year. And they're like, hey, we really want to, you know, give you guys some money for this if you want to get involved and help us with this. So we partnered with them in, in selling tickets to this raffle car and stuff. And then we did one year on a motorcycle. And, and the, the fact that they've stepped up to do like the lunches and stuff at, at the clinics. Like when I first presented them, I had no idea they were going to do that. And it was such a great thing to have that weight lifted. Um, you know, for the, the big event that they've done that with us is our operation restoration event where we've had anywhere from 40 participants and 140 volunteers and to have them step up and, and handle all that as far as feeding that group and stuff. It's just, it was, it was a huge burden lifted off of our team and everything. And those, and those are just a couple of examples of ways that Rotary has really stepped up and been a part of us. Um, and one of our board members, another one of our board, our regular, our, our main board is also uh, a Rotary member and president of a local Rotary here. So Rotary has just been a great partner for many, many years for us. Very cool. So when thinking about having um, different, different groups come together, I, I'm wondering about the connection that you might have with schools. So, you know, you have uh, students who might be students who have learning challenges of one description or another. Do you work with schools in order to identify students who might be good candidates for AMSERF programs? Yeah, yeah, we do. So we've worked with the, uh, there's a, a school just up the street called the Judkins Elementary School. So we present to them every year and, and stuff and they've sent kids down and then we've, you know, we, we send out stuff to all the local school districts and stuff like that. So um, we always, find you know kids that could benefit from our needs through these different connections and stuff and not only here but like working with the city of san diego and their camp wet and wild you know we have people from all over the country reach out to us and you know we'll direct them hey you know if in this area go through this program to get to us and just yesterday i had a woman call from a school in new york wanting to sign up their kids to, to come out to events. And, um, and they're gonna, they're gonna actually, she's actually sending four students to the, uh, to the clinic in New York this weekend. And so, so we're always trying to partner with more and, and get more schools involved in the program. Fantastic. Raquel, do you have another question or comment? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm more than uh, as a thank you for 
being with us and accepting the invitation. Uh, I, I really enjoy the program. And, and I hope that everybody that is looking right now is uh, watching us uh, enjoys it too. So yeah, reach out. And as Dana said, like there's a lot of organizations that you can support. So yeah, it's just a matter of putting yourself out there. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. What I'll do is I'll wind things down and then hand it back to you for a final word in just a moment. For all of you who are watching this as a part of our meeting this particular week, it, we are happy you're with us and we hope you let us know that you are here. So there is a little space for you to be able to put in your name and your email address. Rotarians, that'll generate an email. You can pass back to your club secretaries to make up a miss. Uh, if you are working to keep 100% attendance in Rotary and all of the regular inspiration that comes with that. So hopefully you, that, that is a thing for you. And then a little farther down the page, you see our form. It's an opportunity to tell us what you think of this program, of the inspirational video you saw, of the other elements of the, of the meeting as well. We would love for you to engage with us in that space. You can reply to what other people have posted as well. We hope that that will be part of how you engage with our, our Rotary Club as a part of this experience. Um, as we always do, we hand it back to our speaker for a final word. So Dana, I hand it back to you. Thank you, Rushton. Appreciate it. I just, my final word is, is if you can't get involved with our program, if we're not local to you, find one that's local to you. It will change your life and you will feel so great about giving back. And we always ask the, the participants, who's the best surfer in the water? It's the one with the biggest smile. And that's also who the best volunteer is. You will love it and you will get so much out of it. And please check us out. Learn more about us, ampsurf.org. And thank you all so much. Thank you, Dana. All of you, take a look at the links that are just below this recording. Follow them and learn more. We hope we'll see you next week.